What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having a great day. Today we're back in the garage with another Rogue Glide update for you guys. Today's video is going to be a big one. And what I mean by that is we just got a big shipment in from Thrash and Supply Co. And look at what we have here guys. We got a whole new T-bar setup going on the Rogue Glide. And I cannot wait to get these installed on the bike and show you guys a step-by-step -step video of how to install these T-bars on the Rogue Glide and also give you my review on them as well. Now, I won't be able to give you a full review on them just yet because I live in Michigan and it's snowing out right now and I can't ride the bike, but I will be taking the bike down to Daytona for Daytona Bike Week, so I'll be glad to do a review video on this setup for you guys. I know it's a really expensive setup to go with. Thrash and make some of the best motorcycle parts, period. Uh, they're all made in the USA as you can see here, um, they're out of California and I will leave a link in the description below on all the parts I use today in today's video to install these Thrashin' T-Bars on my 2019 Rogue Glide Special. But before we get started with today's video, we have to take off my current handlebars that are on the bike. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know what bars these are. These are the FXR Division Motor Witch Bars. They have a 12 inch rise, and I went with the Arlen Nest Knurled Grips. I've had these bars on my bike for about three years now. So without further ado, let's hop into today's video and take off my old 12 inch FXR Division Motor Witch Bars on the Rogue Glide. Now, most of you guys are gonna be wondering why I'm switching up from the 12 inch Motor Witch Bars to the Thrash and T-Bars. And the reason for that is I wanted to try something different. I've had these bars on the bike for about three years now. I absolutely love them. I have no complaints whatsoever. I would definitely recommend these bars to anyone who wants to have a true T-bar feel but does not want to relocate their gauges or get rid of their cluster here or their fork lock. These are the best bars you can buy to get that true T-bar feel without having to cut anything up or relocate your gauges. With that being said, they were great. I've had them on the bike for three years. I have no complaints. Like I said, I just wanted to try something different and I really like the gauge relocation on the new Thrash and T-bar setup. So that's why I went All right guys, so now that we got the old bars off, we're ready to disassemble the top tree and basically take all the wiring harnesses and everything off the stock top tree, remove the stock fork lock, and uh, basically I'm gonna go step by step with you guys and show you guys how to remove all this stuff and then obviously how to install the new Thrash and T-Bar setup with their top tree. With their All right guys, so here's the new parts we're gonna be installing on the Rogue Glide today. As you can see here, we went with their new billet top tree it's got the uh, hidden fork lock in here as well. Pull this up. This is a really nice sturdy piece from Thrashing. Pull this out and you have your fork lock. They provide you with some new keys because your obviously your OEM key will not unlock that, that lock. Uh, it comes with your bolts and it comes with these. Now what's cool about these is you can adjust where you want your risers. You can make them closer to you you can put them in that hole further away. So we got those, as you can see here, made in the USA. It's got the Thrash and Supply Co. logo on there and the American flag. Very nice, sturdy billet top tree piece here, guys. Thrashin' makes some quality products, that's for sure. 
So we have that. Over here we have our riser. I went with the nine and a half inch OG riser. As you can see here, they're billet as well. Have the American flag engraved there, made in America. We have the thrash and bar clamp here, made in America. It's got the ARP bolts, very nice piece. And then same with this here, nine and a half inch rise, OG riser. It's got the thrash and supply co logo engraved on that. And then over here we have the gauge relocation bracket. I don't have the gauge relocation cluster just yet. It is on back order and it will be here in the next couple weeks. So we're gonna get this whole install done and then I'll pick up the camera once I have that piece. But we can at least get most of this done today. We just cannot bolt on the gauges. Many months later. All right guys, the last piece of the puzzle finally just showed up after two months of waiting. I've had this video on hold for two months waiting for the gauge relocation bracket. Um, from Thrash and it was on national back order for quite some time like I said about two months um, the anodized uh, housing here uh, was the part that they were waiting on forever and then it had to go to um, after it got cut they had to go to anodize and it just took forever but anyway no more worries and it is here before Daytona bike week so without further ado let's go ahead and finish up this bar install and put the gauge relocation on the handlebars using this hardware and the new gauge relocation they also provide you with this extension harness that's already loomed um, to plug into the back of your gauges and connect to the stock wiring harness that comes out of your fairing so over here we have the perch clamps these are the contrast cut thrash and supply perch clamps all billet just like all the other parts very nice piece engraved thrash and supply co logo and obviously it has the arp bolts as well with those so very nice parts from thrashing now i know this is an expensive t-bar setup but you get what you pay for and thrash and supply co definitely has some quality products and i can't wait to get these on the bike and get you guys an honest review you guys know i do that on this channel i give you guys my honest opinion and honest review on all the parts i've put on the road glide um, and then before we forget i just want to mention that i went with the mid bend thrashing bar in black you can see their logos engraved there as well with the American flag. And uh, yeah, these should be fairly easy to run the wires through too, guys, because you have the holes on the bottom here where you run your switch wires through, and then they just have to come out here on the bottom. So you're talking six inches, eight inches maybe of wire that has to go through here compared to like a standard ape hanger bar or a mini ape. Getting the wires through these handlebars should be a breeze, guys. So I will show you guys how we did that as well. I have my switches and my throttle by wire in the box here. Just gotta get those ran through the bar and that'll be one of the last steps once we get the top tree on, get the risers put on, and then get that bolted up to the bike, then we'll put the bars on. All right guys, so once you have your stock bars removed, you wanna go ahead and remove this black plastic piece that goes around your gauge cluster um, and it's held on by two T40 Torx bits here. You're gonna remove that one and the one on the bottom and this whole plastic piece will come right out. Once you have the plastic nozzle piece, which is what they call it, it's the black plastic piece that bolts up to the stock gauges. Anyway, once you get that pulled out of there, you want to go ahead and remove this plate here. But then we're going to go ahead and snip all the zip ties holding all the stock wiring harnesses together. We're going to unplug the fork lock uh, plug right there. We're going to unplug that. And then we're going to also unplug the ground because on the new Thrash and T-Bar setup, you don't need to have a ground because you're bolting metal to metal. So the OG risers are metal and they are getting bolted to the metal top tree. It'll be a solid ground where the stock bar mount is rubber mounted. So there's rubber bushings in here between the bottom mount here and the top tree. So that's why they needed to run a ground from the factory, but we no longer need the ground with the thrash and T-bar setup. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all that now. And then once you're done getting all the wires out of the way, we're gonna loosen up the top tree and I'll show you guys how we do that next. All right guys, so we got all the wires moved out of the way for now. We're now ready to remove the stock top tree here. 
and you're going to take off the two Allen bolts here, which are a quarter inch Allen, and then your top one here, which is a 5 16 Allen. You do not have to remove the steering stem nut, so do not remove that. All you have to do is loosen up these pinch bolts here, 5 16 up top, quarter inch down here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and pop the stock top tree off the bike. The fork lock comes with it. It is attached to the top tree, so you don't have to remove the fork lock separately. It comes off with the top tree. Alright guys, so now we're getting ready to wire up the new bars, so we're going to start with the left side switch. The left side switch is first, uh, we're going to start with that side because there's only one cable that has to run through the bar. And then the right side is your throttle side, so you have your throttle by wire here, and you have your right side switch wire. So you've got to feed both of those through at the same time, and then they all got to come out the center here. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Uh, with this bar here, it should be really easy. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you only have like six inches of bar to go through. Whereas like on a mini ape or ape hanger bar, you have like two bends to go through and you have to use a bunch of different tricks to get the wires through the handlebar. So hopefully this will be... Uh All right guys, so we got the bars all wired up, ready to go. Um, very, very easy install here uh, compared to a normal handlebar wiring for most Harleys. Um, yeah, like I said, it took about five minutes to get these wires through the bars, no issues at all. Make sure you tape the throttle by wire with the right switch wire uh, to go through the bar. It'll make it a lot easier. Um, as you can see, we used some weed whacker string to pull it through. But all in all, very easy install. We're gonna set the bars aside and build the top tree with the OG risers and then once we get that built we'll put the top tree on the bike and then we'll be able to put the bars on the bike and then the install will pretty much be done. Alright guys so we're getting ready to bolt the OG risers to the top tree and the top tree comes with these quarter inch bolts. Make sure you lock tight the bolts before screwing them into the risers. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and then uh, once we get the risers bolted to the top tree we're going to go ahead and torque them down and then we'll put the top tree on the bike. All right, so we went ahead and put the top bar clamp on just so that we could uh, make sure that the risers are straight when we go to tighten them down. As you can see, we also use the back hole, which brings the riser closer to you. Um, I'm a shorter rider, so I definitely want the risers closer to me. I don't want a, uh, a far reach. So we used the plates that were supplied with the riser and flipped them to where uh, we're using the second hole, which is closer to the rider. So that's all personal preference. Depends on if you're a taller rider or a shorter rider. Um, but yeah, we got that all put together now. We're going to flip it over and tighten down these bolts here. All right, guys, so there's no torque spec for these bolts here for the risers. Uh, basically, just make sure they're real snug. They're a high-grade bolt. They're real, they're real sturdy. They just said to tighten them down as tight as you can. There's no real torque spec for those bolts, but there are torque specs for these pinch bolts here. They want you to tighten these down to 20 foot-pounds for the pinch bolts around the fork tubes and then 25 foot pounds around the steering stem. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these bolts first and then pop the top tree onto the bike. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and take these pinch bolts out. Make sure you put some Loctite, some blue Loctite on these bolts. All right, so we went ahead and put the Loctite on the pinch bolts. Now we're getting ready to put the top tree on the bike and then tighten these down. So we got the top tree on. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque the pinch bolts down. Now that we have the pinch bolts all torqued down, we're getting ready to throw the handlebars on next. You want to go ahead and loosen these up, take the clamp off, and then put your bars on. That's really the next step. So I went ahead and put the handlebars on the riser. Um, nothing's tight yet. I want to get my controls mounted up first and then get the bike off the stand, and then that way I can adjust the bars forward or backwards to where I like them. I wanted to leave that loose for now, but we're going to go ahead and put the new ODI grips on here. These are the V-Twin lock-on grips, the Heart Luck Edition. Very nice uh, clamp-on grips. 
They have the gear inside here for the throttle by wire. And then the other side is also a clamp on grip so you don't have to use grip glue. That's why I went with the ODI grips for this one. So we got the controls all buttoned up. We got the grips on here. We got the bars all tightened up. Got the controls all tightened up. Got the nice thrash and supply perch clamps. That's a must have if you have a row glide because the stock clamp, I'll show you guys here, they're a lot wider and they won't fit on the bar. So as you can see here, the stock perch clamp is a lot wider and there's not enough bar here to clear. Plus it looks like crap. So make sure you buy these when you buy your kit because you can't run these. Also there's a little pin in here that I ground down from the bars I had on the bike previously and there's no hole in the thrashing bar. So make sure you guys buy the thrash and supply perch clamps. So I'll get you guys another view of the T-bar setup here. Pull this off. Very nice quality product they have. Nice fit and finish. ARP bolts throughout. Can't wait to test this out in Daytona and uh, get you guys a review on how this T-bar setup feels compared to the old style mini apes or like I had on there the FXR division uh, motor witch bars which were 12 inch rise. Like I said the front housing is all billet aluminum and it is anodized black. Really nice piece of art here. Um, you have the thrashing engraved there and then you have made in USA here and then you have the carbon fiber housing in the back. It's all fully carbon fiber and it's gloss and it's gonna look real tough on the road glide. I can't wait to get it on there and see what it looks like. So yeah, let's go ahead and get these gauges mounted up. All right guys, so we got the gauge relocation mounted up to the handlebars with the Allen bolts here. They bolt into the back side of the bar clamp here and then you use the extension to bring it out and then you can adjust the gauge height however you want it. I have it basically all the way down without it touching the riser because I wanna be able to see my screen from the rider's position there. So as you can see, it looks like the gauges are sitting in the factory location. Then you have the cool carbon fiber backing on it here. And then that's what it looks like from this angle here. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now we gotta pull the front of the fairing off and pull all these excess wires through because we're not gonna be using those. We're not gonna be using this wire here and same with the one on the other side. The only three wires you're gonna be using is the throttle by wire and your control switches from the left and right control switch wires. So I'm gonna put those in some uh, wire loom and make it all nice and neat and pull the wires we don't need through the front of the fairing. And in order to do that, we gotta take the outer fairing off and the headlight and pull those wires through and just zip tie them in there because with this new setup, you do not need those and you don't want your wires just flopping around here. So. We're gonna go ahead and do that now, but I just wanted to give you guys an overview on how the gauge relocation mount looks. Clean, easy install here, guys. It's done here. I used the wire loom that Thrashen supplied to hide the throttle by wire and the two switch wiring harnesses for the left and right side switches. And I put that in the wire loom and ran it down through here. It's kind of hard to see, but I ran it down through that hole right there. You can see the wire loom poking through there. And then I ran the gauge wire um, for the gauges up over the brake lines and then into the back of the gauges. I'm going to put some uh, shrink tubing or some sort of wire loom to hide those wires there. It's got a nice piece of shrink tube here, um, but I'm going to obviously hide those wires so you can't see them. But other than that, the brake lines you can't really do much with. They just kind of drape over there. Yeah, it's pretty much done. As you can see here, the wire loom um, was kind of a pain in the butt to get all the connectors and everything in there with the wires and run it down through here. And then what you have to do is take your headlight out, as you can see here, took the headlight out, and uh, it's just four bolts here, 3 16 Allens. And then uh, you can see my wire loom coming through here. And basically you pull the stock wiring harness through here uh, and then just zip tie it behind the headlight because you don't use these connectors here anymore, these two here and then this one over here. You don't use that, uh, so I just zip tied them out of the way. Now we're getting ready to throw the headlight back in the bike and then put the fairing back on and button it up. All right guys, so I got the bike all buttoned up, got the fairing back on, got the windshield back on, and look how killer these new gauges look from Thrash and Supply Co. They turned out killer. And as you can see, the way I have the gauges mounted down low, it does not block the screen, which was my biggest 
fear with going to T-bars is having the gauges way up here where I can't see my screen. So you can see the screen fully with no issues and you can see the gauges just fine as well. As you can see here, my shift light is just hanging because I have to mount it here. I'm gonna mount it in between the gauge cluster there just like that. I just haven't done that yet, but I wanted to close out today's video just because I've been waiting two months to finish this video. I've had the bike apart in my garage for two months. That's why I've been slacking on providing you guys with some content, so I apologize for that. But we have Daytona Bike Week coming up. Can't wait to get the bikes loaded up and go down there and get you guys some good content from Daytona. Uh, stay tuned. There's big news coming to the channel next couple videos. I'm actually doing a collab with another YouTuber that drag races his bike. He does a lot of racing out on the street, and I'm actually meeting up with him in Daytona. So I'm not going to touch too much on that because this video is way too long as it is. But stay tuned. There's epic content coming to the channel some different collabs with other YouTubers in Daytona, and uh, we're gonna have a blast down there in March. This is the nine and a half inch riser with the mid bend bars, and it feels so good. I can't wait to actually go out and ride it. Obviously I can't right now, it's snowing here in Michigan and it's like zero degrees out. Uh, but with less than a month, we'll be loading these bikes up and heading down to Daytona for Daytona Bike Week. So I will give you guys a review on the bars once I get down there. If you guys are heading down to Daytona for Bike Week this year, make sure you comment down below. Uh, message me on Instagram at Do Work Motorsports. I'll put it up here on the screen for you. Uh, maybe we can meet up and uh, meet you guys. I met a couple subscribers last year when I was down there. That was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that's basically going to do it for today's video, guys. Um, it was a pretty easy install. Bar installs are never that easy, but I have to say... This thrash and T-bar setup was pretty easy. The hardest part was, uh, like I said, rerouting all the wires and the wiring harnesses down through the top tree there. Um, but other than that, it was a pretty easy install. I love these ODI MX style grips too. I love the way those look on there and they feel really soft. So happy, oh, almost uh, tipped over there. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today's install guys. If you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate all your support on the channel. For all you OG Harley followers and subscribers that have been subscribed to me since I got my Rogue Glide, shout out to you guys. I really appreciate your support on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.